welcome. This is the prestigious one once again. We are here for episode three of my new podcast series, which is called How to Become a Pro Wrestler. And today we're going to be talking about something extremely important, which is how to manage your time and your money. And those are your most important assets in that order. Time is absolutely the most valuable commodity that you have. Um, So I do want to get into that a little bit, but also you can do as much as you can without money, but there are certain things that are just unavoidable and they need paid for. But not to worry, one of the biggest concerns that I have from people when I talk to them about wanting to become a professional wrestler, one of them people say, I don't have enough time. And another another thing that people say is, I don't have the money to train. Now, I have been in both situations. I've been in one situation. I've been in the other situation. I've been in both situations at the same time. The key is to figure out a way to overcome that obstacle at the end of the day is simply just an obstacle. So I kind of want to open up the chat as well. Um, I'm just going to launch that so you guys can chat along with me. If you are here and you've got any questions, you can ask as we go and I will do my best to respond to everyone's questions. Um, So... People, when they start professional wrestling or they want to get into professional wrestling, just to recap very quickly, the first episode we talked about your motivations for getting into professional wrestling and remembering that professional wrestling has multiple roles. Everyone can have a role. You don't necessarily need to be a wrestler. Um, you You can get involved in many other ways, but most of the stuff that I'm going to be commenting on is about how to become a professional wrestler. But this will also apply to people who want to be referees, want to be promoters, people who want to help out, do merch, maybe start your own brand, people who just want to be involved. This applies to everyone, okay? Um, But what you do need to understand is it is very competitive and very demanding. So, we, you know, if you want to really check your uh, your reasons and be realistic about your reasons for getting into the business, I recommend you listen to episode one. Episode two was all about accelerating your training once you've already started. Uh, I was kind of giving you some tips about how to make yourself a commodity and stand out from your peers. So that's episode two. And this one, as I say, is going to be talking about how to manage your time and your money because that is a big concern for people. Uh, and again, I'm going to give you my experience. It may not work for you. It may not be applicable to you. I'm hoping that I'm going to be able to deliver this in a way that you can take something from it. Um, so I will do my best because I've been in a variety of situations now. As we spoke about many times, when I got into professional wrestling, uh, I did not have a, a job when I kind of just started getting into wrestling. It was a little while before I had some proper financial backing. And for me, um, I again, if I could go back and change things, um, what I did is I uh, was operating on payday loans and, and uh, bank loans and things like that. And I just wouldn't recommend that that I'm still paying off these things. So I'm going to try to help you guys avoid that pitfall. So when you do eventually make this your professional job, you don't have to still be paying off things uh, that you did before. Because here's the thing you need to understand about why you want to avoid payday loans and uh, loans of high interest and things like that if you want to get money that you you don't have access to. Because look, there's, there's two ways to do it. You can either save or you can just skip the queue and you can get a loan and get money instantly, but that comes at a cost. That comes at a very high premium. You all know what it is and it's interest. And when it comes to payday loans and things like that, it's obvious. I don't, I'm explaining the obvious to you, but if you borrow £100, you're going to have to pay back £120. And it doesn't seem that big a deal. It's just £20, right? Well, I'll tell you how it becomes a big deal. It becomes a big deal when you compound that. So what I mean by that is it becomes a compound interest. So if you've borrowed a hundred pounds, you then need to pay 120 pounds back. And then you do that when it gets to payday or whatever your financial situation is. Um, Once you've paid that back, you then have for the next month an 120 pound gap. So you have to borrow 120 pounds and then you have to pay back 150 pounds and it becomes this massive loop. And then one day you've borrowed so much that you're no longer legible to borrow any more and they cut you off and then you're screwed. And what are you going to do? So I would not recommend this to anyone. Um, again, just being honest, when I say I started professional wrestling, I didn't have a job. I've only ever been impl- unemployed in my life for four weeks. And it was 
one of the most it was one of the most difficult challenging times in my life so if you're currently in that situation i definitely empathize with you and what i will say is having goals i.e professional wrestling is the perfect way to get yourself out of that situation i'm going to tell you what my my opinion used to be when i my idea was and now i had a i've got a first class honors degree right uh, in business and marketing, but I, in my head, decided what I'm going to do is try and get the job with the least responsibility so that when I'm done with my job, I'm done and I check in and I leave and that's me and then I can go train and I don't have to think about anything else, all right? In theory, that's great. But if you know anyone that works in a minimum wage job, you will know that minimum wage jobs work you way harder than jobs that are related to your degree or a management position. So what you actually want to do is, I had this idea that if I went down the kind of career route that I was detracting from a professional wrestling training, when in fact, what I was doing was giving myself more free time to think because I wasn't having to constantly deal with customers, but I was able to think about what I was doing because I was at a desk. I could get my work done in four hours and plan wrestling in the other four hours. Not only that, because I got a job related to my degree, I was eventually able to go part-time and basically earn what would be a minimum wage salary on a part-time. But that didn't happen overnight. None of these things can happen overnight. There was one point where I was working, I was commuting from Edinburgh to Glasgow. So I was up in the car. Uh, I was up at 5 a.m. I was in the car for like 6 a.m. or whatever to get to work for 9 in Glasgow. I would work 9 till half 5 or whatever. Then I would again rush over on the way back to Edinburgh, hit the gym and go to bed, rinse and repeat and do shows at the weekend. That was brutal, okay? If you find yourself in a situation like that, there needs to be an end game. Like, there can't, you can't do that forever. I could only do that for a year. I can only manage it for a year, but I found a point where I eventually was able to go full-time. But that, we'll come to that later. You guys want to know, how do you tackle the first part, right? So let's assume, I'm going to assume, a lot of people listen to this, because it's tough times, right, do not have a whole lot of expendable income right now. So let's assume that you have a job, but the expendable income is, look, we're all, we're all feeling the pinch right now, right? But what I challenge you, the first thing that you can do is let's think about how can you get, how can you put some money aside for training? Now, the first thing I'm gonna suggest you, and this seems really basic, and this is something I have to be really disciplined about myself, there are things that you can do immediately that will cut down your costs and take you to a place where you will have way more money in your pocket. As simple as this, and I'm talking the basics. If you go to Asda or Tesco or Sainsbury's, switch to Lidl or Aldi and buy your stuff in bulk. You know, it sounds stupid, but you will find, you'll go there and your shopping bill will be two thirds of what it would be at the other places. Stop buying coffees, stop buying fizzy juice in uh, shops at full price, buy a cheaper brand. Um, if you get coffee, get a flask. Fill up a coffee flask. Do you know how much money people spend on coffee? And what you'll find is if you ever meet rich, successful people, they're some of the tightest people you will ever meet. They are not going to be spending three, four pounds on a Starbucks coffee. Go to the supermarket, find yourself some coffee that you absolutely love and just brew it at home and put it in a flask and take it on the road. There's little things. Just think about ways that you can challenge yourself to bring down the amount of money that you're spending. At the end of the day, it all comes down to priorities. Like, how bad do you want this? How bad do you want to be a professional wrestler? You need to want this as badly as anything else in your life. So also, if you don't have the money, let's say you've cut back on the costs a little bit, but now you're thinking, I actually need to generate some cash here. And as I said last time, I'm looking around this room, right? And I'm a musician. Everybody knows that. And that guitar right there, I love that guitar. I've had that since I think I was 15. I have supported the Fratellis playing that guitar. I've supported the Subways. I've played on main stages with it. I've taken it to Iceland. I've, I've, you know, I've traveled with it. It is just, it means so much to me. It means a lot to me, but at the end of the day, it is a possession. It means a lot less to me 
than knowing if I could ever be successful in the professional wrestling business. And if you go to your grave without ever trying this because of a financial reason, what do you think is going to be mean more to me? Like, oh man, I'm so glad I've got my this this piece of wood with strings on it. Or maybe I could have sold that. That guitar right there is worth five hundred pounds. I could sell that for five hundred pounds. And let's say that professional wrestling training costs you. Let's just say, let's be generous and say for the training and the travel X, Y, and Z, it's twenty pounds a go. So there you go. You've got fifty training sessions right in that thing there. Now I'm not saying that you've got a Gibson SG sitting in your living room, right? But you may have some of these. Look behind me here. If you're, if you're listening, I've got a variety of consoles behind me, right? I'm sure most people watching this have got a PC or they've got an Xbox or a PS4 and you need to understand these. I've got them myself, but I understand that these are luxuries. These must be sold if you do not have the money to train and you want to be a professional wrestler and you expect to achieve these results, right? Just understand that's a choice, right? So you may be in a situation where you go, well, I love my PlayStation. I don't want to sell that. Well, then what do you want to sell? Have you got something else that you can get rid of? No, I don't want to get rid of that. I don't want to get rid of that. You have to get rid of something. And if it comes down to that you don't want to get rid of anything, then I'm sorry, folks. You don't want to be a professional wrestler really that badly. And that sounds harsh, but that is just the brass taxes of the situation, right? When I started training, Again, I didn't have a lot of money. I was relying on these payday loans. And what the reason I'm selling, the reason I'm telling you, look at this thing behind me, like with the PS2 there when I started training, PS3 in the living room. They mean nothing to me now, you know? Not nothing, but not much. I could, if I, do you think I'd care if I sold them to be able to fund my training? If I'd have done that, I wouldn't still be paying off crap that I'm paying now because of stuff like that. I'm trying to get you guys to avoid the pitfalls that I fell into, okay? Also, I said to you, that being said though, there are certain things you don't want to scrimp and save on. Last time we talked about it, and these were the recommendations that I made. Um, I've just ordered a new pair myself. I've got Trace knee pads. Now, unfortunately, they cost me £35 this time, but it doesn't matter because the first pair lasted me for five years. Training sessions, matches, everything, the whole shebang, five years. So if you want to get knee pads or elbow pads, Trace, that is the brand to get. Do not scrimp and save on that, okay? The same with your wrestling shoes. I urge you, do not get the Lonsdale boots, all right? Because you get the Lonsdale boots and instantly it just has that vibe of trainee. And you are trainees, of course, but impressions matter. And this is just such a little thing. But if you say, okay, maybe if I sell this position or if you don't want to sell your possessions, you don't need to, but maybe save up some cash. Maybe is there something that you can do? Can you take on some extra shifts to deliver pizzas at night? Whatever it is, I'm just telling you the trace knee pads are worth it. Get yourself ASICs wrestling training shoes. Okay. ASICs shoes. You can get them from 40 pounds, that sort of thing. They go up and up and up and they're quite hard to get sometimes, but you can get a great deal on them. I recommend you do that. If you walk in with your ASICs training shoes, uh, your trace knee pads, you know, you've got some great kit there to get started with. And also, as we discussed, do not go to training with a wrestling t-shirt on. Again, it's just not, again, I, I, this sounds like I'm being a snob, but I'm just telling you now, if you're taking a training session and someone shows up wearing a t-shirt of their famous wrestler, uh, their favorite famous wrestler, that does not say to me, this is someone who is going to be the next big star in professional wrestling. This says to me, that is a fan who has just decided to cross the other side of the barrier, right? Now, I'm not getting high and mighty about it because that was me, okay, in that time, but you got to just always have the air of professionalism. Sometimes what's going on here in your mind, you don't need to project at all times. And that's some of the advice I wish I had taken on board. You know, I've kind of early on, I never do it now. I stopped doing it after my first year, but in my fir first year of training, you know, I'll give you an example. Um, I asked uh, Doug Williams for a picture, you know, in training. And it was just kind of, sometimes there's appropriate moments, but I look back at that and the next year, I think it was I wrestled Doug Williams in the main event up in Dundee in a hole holding a thousand. And I thought to myself, just a year ago, I was asking him for pictures, almost coming across as a fan. So you just never know when you might be in a situation where you go, oh, I probably wish I hadn't done that. So just really, just think about that. It's, it's, it's 
quite hard to have that foresight, but just always have that um, in in the in the front of your mind. I've got people saying for the knee pads, uh, what size do you want to get? I got myself large knee pads, and I found that they were slightly too small. So if you see me and you look at my size, you probably want to go with the XL. I'm gonna have to get another pair of XLs, but the large will just about do. So if you're significantly smaller than me, you'll be fine with the medium. Um, if you're a bit smaller than me, the large are going to be great for you. If you're mass size, I recommend the XL. Um, so yeah, uh, but back to the, the money side of things. So again, you just got to do what you got to do. Okay. You just got to cut out the non-essentials and I need you guys to understand that I, I have not been on a holiday. I've traveled the world for wrestling, but I have not been on a holiday and I did not go on a holiday since I was 17 because I had goals in mind. I had things I wanted to achieve. And I don't think a lot of people realize that if you're saving up for a holiday, do you really need that holiday as badly as you need success? You know, it's really, when it comes down to time and money, it's really about organizing your priorities, okay? It's about what is more important to you. So we've discussed like some of the money stuff. And what I want you guys to think about is the people in the chat, ask me some questions about if I'm not covering something, right? If I've if you're in a situation and you're thinking that isn't relevant to me, tell me right now and we will tackle your situation individually because I'm confident that we can do that. If you're sitting there and you're thinking, despite what you've said, I still don't think that I can raise the money to get going with training. There are solutions. So in the chat, let me know right now if you've still got money concerns when it comes to training. Let me know. But in terms of time, again, this is something that's that's this is a difficult thing to get over because there will be a time in your life when you think that you're working hard and when it comes to it when when it comes to following a passion right you've really got to so i'm just trying to follow the comments as we go along here if anyone does have something to add to that please do let me know but with the time it can be one of the most difficult things I understand a lot of people have got families you've got people who have very demanding jobs you've got people who have a variety of situations that mean getting the time to go to professional wrestling training or to dedicate to a professional wrestling career is very difficult and i hear you um but really quite simply you just kind of have to make the time and there's lots of podcasts and people you can listen to about how to do this and how to fix your attitude and your motivation to understand this but again if you watch that uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger series that I recommended to you last time which was training for mass the blueprint series um, Arnold Schwarzenegger check that out it's only 16 minutes long I watch that I, on the way to the gym I listen to that Every time I go to the gym, it's become a routine now because I want it fresh in my mind. Um, so there's that. Gary V talks about it as well. Everyone here, I recommend that you subscribe to Gary V on YouTube and just follow some of his stuff about not wasting time, about forcing yourself not to be lazy. Because the fact of the matter is, folks, right? If you look at, like, let's take me for an example, right? I've recently, and again, the reason I'm doing this, this series is because I want to reignite my own career. I'm not happy with where I am in professional wrestling right now. I expect more of myself. So the reason I'm doing this is because I'm trying to not only inspire you guys to get started in professional wrestling, but to inspire myself to ask more of myself, you know? And to be honest, folks, I was working hard, but just not working hard enough. And one of the reasons is I had the amateur on one side, I've got the pro wrestling on the other side, but now there's no excuses. I'm all in focused on professional wrestling. And now, honestly, I'm going to tell you what I do. I go for a run in the morning, every morning. I do a weight session in the evening. I'm working on content all the time. Um, I've got, obviously, my matches. You've got merchandise. And there's so many things that go into it. And I understand that I have the luxury of being a full-time professional wrestler. And as we discussed last time, you know, there are not unlimited spots. There are a finite number of spots, Okay a finite number of spots. Um, so you're going to have to take a spot from me to get on the show. And if guys like myself and people who are full time in the business already have uh, the ability to focus on it full time, imagine how much harder you're going to have to work to take a spot from somebody to get on a show because you're a fantastic wrestler or because you're charismatic or because you have an amazing look or a combination of the above, but you have to get to that point. 
that's how difficult it is. So in some ways, if you can get through the training aspect of it and you can get through your first few years in the business, you can really get through anything. And I think one of the problems is that things just started to happen for me because I'd put in that work and maybe I coasted a little bit. Maybe I coasted a little bit. And now I'm in a situation where I'm not where I want to be and now I need to do more. So I'm trying to inspire myself to do more and I'm gonna ask you guys to do the same thing. So in terms of managing your time, the first thing that you can do is, look folks, I think sometimes the best way is to just get started. But really, what if I told you it could be as simple as let's get let's just get into a routine. You need to build a habit because if I tell you you need to change your life right now, you need to change everything around it, all needs to be focused on wrestling, everything that you know and love about your day is now gone, that's not a great way to do it. I encourage you to incrementally build habits. So let's start with this, right? Now, for me, I want to be a superstar. Who's a superstar? I look at The Rock and I see what he does. He's doing cardio in the morning and weights in the evening, and that seems to be the consensus for what's successful. So if he does that, I'm going to do that, right? But you know what? Running's pretty difficult. It's difficult to get into. It's quite a tough thing to do. So maybe rather than going for a 25-minute run in the morning right off the bat, what about if I challenge you to before you do anything in the morning, before you go for your shower, before you have your breakfast, before you go do anything, I challenge you people tomorrow to get up 20 minutes earlier and go for a brisk walk and come back and then start your day. And that, believe it or not, will be in a very small way starting fasted cardio, okay? When you get into the routine of that, it will just become your routine and you will notice the benefits of even doing that. Then once you've started walking, which, and that's what I did. That's exactly what I did, okay? Now, I know that sounds weird for somebody that's been to the Commonwealth Games and is the British champion, but when you let yourself get out of shape, even the smallest of tasks, even to someone like myself, can seem overbearing. So what I started is, right, I take the dog out for a walk in the morning. Then I escalate that to, I take the dog out for a walk, and I I go out for half an hour. Now, it's a 25-minute run with the dog at an intense pace, you know, just because of his age, I can't really take him out much longer than that right now because he's a, he's a puppy. But there will be a point where me and him will be going out for 30, 40 minute runs in the morning, every morning. And that's how I start my day. When anyone asks me about how do I transform my life? How do I get into this? It's all about habits. It's all about the outcome as well. You can go through these things and not want to be there and hate every second of it. But as long as you do it, as long as you get out there and do your 20 minutes, it's done. And I guarantee the dread of not wanting to do it and all that crap will be gone as soon as you've done it. And it's like when I did judo as a kid. I never went to, wanted to go, but once I was gone, I never, re- I never regretted going. I always was thankful for the fact that I've gone. And it's the same thing. So for you folks out there, just start with some fasted cardio. Go for a 15, 20-minute walk tomorrow morning. And why not? If you can't go for a 15-minute walk tomorrow morning before you do anything else, then sorry, your chances of becoming a wrestler aren't great. Because we can be nicey-nicey, but there does come a point where you need to realize this does require a mental toughness. And that is a small task. And if you can do that, If you can go for a very quick walk, I don't care if it's five minutes, but if you get your ass out of bed and you go for a walk before you start your day, you have earned my respect. Because if you can even break your routine with that little grain, that is the start of these behaviors and you can build on that. Slow and steady wins the race. It's about being patient. So you can do that. And then we've discussed on the other episodes about how you can get started with your physical training and things like that. You've also got to be thinking about your diet. Now, the the issue is, folks, I'm going to tell you something that is very difficult about the money side of professional wrestling. And the thing that shocked me the most about professional wrestling, the thing that cost me the most, for being a professional wrestler, and it will probably shock you when I tell you what it was. What do you think was the thing that cost me the absolute most when I got into professional wrestling? In the comments right now. In the comments. I'm going to go... I'm going to read some of the comments here. Um, Okay. Um, I will try and answer ones that apply to everyone here. Uh, I've, people are enjoying the stream saying they're, they're inspiring. I really appreciate that. Um, 
Sir Shane makes a really good point. I think it's easy to read emails and go for a walk for half an hour in the morning. It really helps. That is a great idea. If you want to get started, that's that's how you got to do it. Um, so James is saying as well, he's looking forward to getting started into training. Um, and Sir Shane also said, interesting one is swapping a small journey on the bus for a walk and then catch it later down the line. There you go. It's a good point. So I've got some guesses for the thing that cost me the most. And quite a few of you have got it. It was in fact the diet. The diet is the thing that was the biggest shock to me because, again, what I was trying to do was to start eating clean and it's expensive because what you do is you go, okay, well, I'll have some chicken or I'll have some ham or if you're vegan, you know, you can have your substitutes or whatever, but you start to realize that things that are high in protein are way more expensive than things that are high in carbohydrates. Now, when you start to do this, you need to start to bring down those carbs, not necessarily eliminate them, but let's get them under control. Let's bring them down and let's push up that protein content. And that's the cost that starts to get you. So this is when you really need to start to get creative about your diet. And I'm going to tell you some of the best, most effective ways to do it, okay? Um, so if you want to get that protein in on a budget, this kind of relates to the money side of things, but also the time side of things. I don't have a huge amount of time to cook. I've started cooking uh, scrambled eggs and omelets and things like that. But other than that, and steaks, it's not really my bag. I don't have a huge amount of time to do it. But that's, I do the basics, all right? But when I need protein and I'm like, oh, I don't know what to do, uh, Tesco, I would say, has the probably the best selection of rotisserie chicken and various other chicken items that are going to be able to get you through the day on a budget. For example, I think their chicken thighs are basically, I think, 50 pence each or something like that. And each one of them is probably got like 20 grams of protein in each one. So usually if you're to buy a pack of chicken or you're to buy a pack of ham that's say 100 grams that's going to have 20 or 30 grams of protein in it and you're lucky if you're going to get that for a pound okay so you want to go to the rotisserie chicken counter and you want to look at the chicken thighs that they've got or the chicken drumsticks or even a whole chicken again because people go to nando's right but let me tell you this you can go to asda you can pick up a, a full rotisserie chicken for four pounds okay or you can go, when you know it's going to be on offer, you can get that for a few pounds and you can actually buy the exact sauce that you would put on a Nando's chicken, which I would recommend the lemon and herb because it's low in sugar, okay? I like the spicier ones as well, but they're higher in sugar. Get the lemon and herb one, take it back, and there you go. You've got a Nando's full chicken for basically three to five pounds. And trust me, a half chicken or a full chicken for your size, as long as you're, you know, if you're not absolutely huge, then that is going to be your protein content for the day. If you get a full rotisserie chicken, that's pretty much the whole thing. So for me, I ended up spending like 12 to 15 quid a day on food trying to hit these macros of I need this protein, I need that, I need this. And at the end of the day, if I'd had someone to just tell me, Joe, the hack is go and get the rotisserie chicken and get all your stuff there. One more hack for you. Um, you want to get yourself pork crunch, okay? It's quite heavy to eat. But if you can stomach it, it's not too bad. Pork crunch, you get it in, it's basically like bags of crisps, all right? Now, people are going to be like, pork crunch, why are you recommending that to me? I'm recommending it to you because it has twice the protein content of chicken. And you can get 35 gram bags for like a quid, which doesn't sound like a lot, but those bags of 35 grams have got like 25 grams of protein in them. Okay, so if you want something a little bit different, you can kind of pretend you're just eating a dry bag of crisps. Look out for pork crunch in the aisles of your supermarket. Try a bag. If it's for you, it might not be for you because it can be quite difficult to eat if you're, you know, if you're big on taste. But if you don't mind, if you don't mind just powdering through it to get it done, then that might be an item for you because you can get uh, all your protein through basically the rotisserie chicken and that on the cheap. So that's one way that you can do it. I'm not a dietary expert, but again, these are just a couple of tips that can get me through the day. Another one is eggs. You know, eggs are super cheap as well. Um, it's, it gets difficult when you're, you know, you're on the road and you go to Marks and Spencer's and you've got a hundred gram 
box of chicken and you, it's like three pounds fifty and you're like what is going on here that's kind of what you want to avoid so you want to find where you can get the protein for the cheapest amount and again everything i've basically described to you is something that you don't need to cook as well so that saves on time so for me now i'm thank you know i'm thankful for the fact that my my partner does cook so that's great for me but in terms of my own cooking uh, i'll cook eggs in the morning and so I really only have to cook once or twice a day and I'm still getting five quality meals with 40 grams of protein in it, which I'm not saying you need to get that. I need to get that because I'm, you know, 220 pounds. So I'm wanting 200 grams of protein. Uh, if you're 100 pounds, you need half of that. It's roughly one pound, uh, sorry, one gram of protein per, bound, uh, per pound of body weight. Sorry, that was a bit of a tongue twister to get that one out there. Okay, so that is just some tips of get thinking about the diet about how you can overcome the pitfalls of spending too much on your diet because for a while there like i say i was spending 10 to 15 pounds a day on food and just getting creative with the rotisserie chicken knowing when it's going on offer getting yourself some eggs maybe the odd bag of pork crunch or whatever that's going to get all the protein you need on the cheap and it's not really going to require that much more investment than your regular diet so that's already taking care of a huge part of the budget that's going to be holding you back. Um, so that kind of takes care of that in terms of time. If you work long hours, that can kind of get you through it as well. Um, again, you can always refrigerate that chicken and take it to work and all that stuff and blah, 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 blah. Um, but for me, the diet I'm on right now, I do fasting. Uh, I did my first ever, again, this is my own experience. I did a 36 hour fast, um, a first one. I wouldn't recommend that. Um, the 18 hour one's great. Um, that's fine. I probably wouldn't do the 36 hour one again. I just wanted to try it so I can tell you guys whether it works or not. I think the 18 hour one is phenomenal. Not a big fan of the 36 hour one. But what I do is one day a week now, I'm going to do my 18 hour fast. For the other days of the week, I am going to do my five meals, five small meals with 40 grams of protein in them. So that's what I'm going to be doing. I'm going to let you guys know how I get on. And you may start to see it, but I'm starting to actually lean down very quickly and drop fat, even in the, the few weeks that we've... So basically, I started... Yeah, yeah, I'm just looking at the comments. Yes, it is intermittent fasting that I'm talking about. Um, so I'm just going to check. There's uh, Just moderate the comments here. Um, unfortunately, sorry, uh, the, the the night bot, which is the, the bot that moderates our comments, doesn't like the word bloody for some reason. So do apologize, Sir Shane. Don't, uh, don't worry, you're not in trouble. Um, so for the audio listeners, sorry, we're live on Twitch right now. Uh, so yes, uh, where, 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 where are we? It's easy to get lost. Yeah, I've actually noticed huge benefits already from switching to the five meals. Uh, and again, it's just getting disciplined, you know? So now let's think about, again, you got to think about career-wise. What I want you guys to understand is I don't want you to be ashamed in having a successful career that's, that's not pro wrestling because what you need to understand is this career is going to give you the power to do the things that you want to do in pro wrestling. There's just really no way of getting around it that money is basically a solution. In this world, money can solve any problem. You can either solve a problem through creativity and time or with money. And creativity and time can work to a certain extent, but there comes a point where you need so you need some of each, you know? And so you're going to need to get to a point where you're going to need to generate yourself some extra income. Again, if you're thinking about this is not possible for me to do, I guarantee it is possible for you to do. Again, subscribe to Gary V's YouTube. And what he does is he goes around garage sales um, and he goes to pound stores or dollar stores in America and he takes an app that is linked to eBay and he basically scans these items that are cheap in the pound shop or the dollar shop, and it shows how much they sell for on eBay. And when you notice a discrepancy, you basically buy that item in bulk, take it home, sell it on eBay, and ship it off, and you make X amount per unit. And the truth is, if you're willing to put in you know, a 12-hour shift doing that, you can kind of make like 150 quid, $200, that sort of thing. And that is just the nuts and bolts of the situation. That's just one creative solution. That's just one way 
to make money. Again, if you're looking for extra money on top of your job, you can always do you know deliveries and stuff like that. Or you can kind of go down the career route, which is what I decided to do. I decided, sorry, it's my chair, by the way. It's a bit squeaky. But I decided to go down the career route and to kind of progress forward and get work that was related to my degree. So I just want you guys to understand that I went into pro wrestling with the idea of I'm, I'm not going to get a job with any responsibilities. I'm just going to do this and blah, blah, blah. And found that in, in a minimum wage job, I did... I think about 10 times more work that I did in any of the jobs that followed. And the other thing I want you guys to understand is if you all have jobs, like in the in the chat, who here has jobs and who here is unemployed? Let me know. I want to know what the breakdown is here. But if you are, if you have a job, we have this thing in the UK. I don't know if it exists in America, right? Or, or elsewhere. But in the UK, there's kind of like this guilt that comes with, for example, we feel guilty about calling in sick. You call in, it's like, oh, well, well, you know, we need people. We need people, you know? Yeah, but I'm sick. Oh, well, well who's going to manage the store? Who's going to, who, how are we going to do this? We don't, I don't have enough people to do the door. Your manager presents it to you as if that's your problem. As if the fact that a million pound or billion pound uh, company ha- does not have the correct provisions for if someone is ill, which is all too common. We all know about this. You know, when it comes to working for supermarkets and call centers and bars and restaurants and all this stuff, if you real, it's your fault that the business is going to fail that day. Nonsense. You need to rid yourself of that guilt. And you need to understand that you are making money now to survive, to survive, not to thrive, to survive and just do enough. And the rest is to fuel your professional wrestling. If you've got family and whatnot, slightly different parameters there, but we'll talk about that in a little second. But I'm talking to the people who at this point don't have any responsibilities. Do not give a crap about your job, okay? that I know that sounds weird. I'm going to give you an example. What you need to think about is you, you need to give a crap about your job to the point that it's, you need to understand that it's an exchange, Okay, that sounds like weird advice. And I want to explain that. Don't give a crap about your job is a little bit of a flipping statement. So let me explain it. What I mean is your job is an exchange. At the end of the day, you are agreeing to show up for a certain price, complete certain work, and in return, you will be paid. However, in the UK, we're supposed to, I don't know if it's the same in the US, but in these workplaces, we're supposed to go in there and feel like, oh, yes, sir, please, sir, no, uh, you know, yes, sir, please, please, sir, three bags full, sir, whatever the, the phrase is, please, can I have some more? You're supposed to be grateful for the fact that you actually have a job. Well, well, no thanks, it's actually an exchange, okay? And trust me, folks, in any job that you do, that business is going to do their very best to exploit you in every single way way possible. So don't feel bad about it if you need to miss a little day here and there to do some wrestling training or if you don't quite hit this target or whatever. The ideal situation is that you can hit your targets, you can deliver, you can get promotions and all that stuff and that's great. If you can find a job that you think is meaningful, go for it. That's eventually where I got to. I got a job that I was able to actually put some effort into and make some better money and move forward. But when I was in that job, I was literally ladling soup. Okay, nothing against ladle and soup. I have done it for a year, but at the amount of pressure that was put on me to do that and to do all this extra stuff, and you know, oh, don't clock in exactly nine o'clock. You know, you know, come in at ten to nine, but clock in at nine, and then oh, you know, I know you've got a half an hour break, but let's not take the whole break because you know, if you want to be really good here, you know, pff, the great people don't use their whole break. Nah, 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 nah. This is an exchange, all right, and you've got a goal to be a professional wrestler. So let's do enough to stay in the job. Let's do enough to be decent at the job. Let's do enough to make sure that we don't get fired. But while we're at that job, let's take that time to think about what the next steps are. Professional wrestling, what moves am I gonna use? What wrestlers inspire me? What characters am I gonna do? What am I gonna do in my workout tonight? The job is a means to an end, unless you're passionate about your job. I do not want to step on the toes of people who are passionate about their job, but I'm talking to the people who were in my situation, which was, I felt boxed in, in a minimum wage job, ladling soup, it was going nowhere, 
And I was putting all this energy into it. And I started working behind the bar in the same place. And I want to tell you about an uh, uh, exchange I had there that really was pretty interesting. And the bar manager comes over and he goes, oh, check this out, check this out. By the way, I've seen something in the comments about saying in the UK, it's hard to get fired in the UK and Ireland too, so I'll give you some options. Be careful with that, people, because that is not the case unless you've been working there for two years. Since the Tory government came in, you now need to be working somewhere two years before you have basic employee rights. Uh, it doesn't matter what your company policy is. Until you've worked there for two years, you they can get rid of you for any reason they do not even have to explain themselves as long as you as lo if if you can as long as you are not able to prove that it's due to discrimination they can get rid of you for any reason so basically you have no guarantees until you've been working there for now two years it used to be one is now two so be very careful with that what I'm saying is let's look at the Jim Carrey quote right the one when he's talking about his dad uh, Jim Carrey says his dad was funnier than him his dad was hilarious he could have been a comedian but he decided against it because he wanted to play it safe and provide the family with an income and he did that and then what happened he lost his job so in actual fact I would say the chances are that you're going to be you're not going to be successful at something you're not passionate about so if there's a chance that you might fail at the thing you don't want to do, you might as well try the thing you do want to do. But in realistic terms, you know, you need money to do so. So I just want you to see your jobs as that now. Okay, I want you to realize that you have a power here. Okay, the reason that they want you to turn up when you need to when, when you're ill or you need to be sick is because they're not properly prepared for it. They try and scrimp and save on things like that. That is their fault. It is not your fault. I remember again, I was at another job, which was a bit further down the line, and they wouldn't let me go to a family funeral. It was like it was like my stepdad's mum. And I wasn't allowed to go to the funeral. I'm like, what are you talking about? It's like, this guy's like helped raise me since I was 10 years old. And I can't go to his mum's funeral. It's like, what are you talking about, man? You know? So it's just, people find it, people get themselves into this situation where they start to feel worthless because their managers are talking down to them. And what you need to understand is see the managers that are bitching and moaning and having a go about you're an idiot and you can't do this and blah, 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 blah. These people are just pissed off that they're not where they wanted to be as well and they're giving that to you because you've got all these options and you can you've you've still got these possibilities in your life and I knew in my heart and in my head that I was sitting there ladling soup and every person in there thought I was a complete idiot but I knew that I was going to be the world champion in professional wrestling and I still do I can't tell you why I just did but because I had that vision I'm so much closer than I was then so people I have the same thoughts of grandeur back then that I do now. Nothing's changed in that regard, okay? So if you've got that faith and belief in yourself, do not let colleagues or co-workers or your managers beat that out of you. That is so important because I see it happen to so many people. People start buying into the fact that they're lucky to have a job and X, Y, and Z. No, it's BS. At the end of the day, a job is an exchange, all right? A job is an exchange. And guess what? It's okay to be ill here and there. Now, I'm not telling you to miss every shift and all that. Let's make sure that we're not, you know, treading over any any lines that's going to get us a, a warning or a verbal warning or a written warning or, or, or fired or whatever, right? Let's keep it within the, the let's keep it within a safe, uh, kind of like a, you don't want to you don't want to be taking risks as well because the the thing is if you do want to change job or you're worried you're going to have to leave your job you kind of want to have something else to go to so I'm not telling you people to go in tomorrow and just start owning it at your workplace I'm just saying understand that if you work in a bar or you work in a restaurant or you work in a supermarket or any job that you are not fulfilled and you want to be a professional wrestler does it really matter if you suck at that job as long as you're not going to get fired be decent enough at that job to maintain that job all right but i'll tell you now i was never the best at ladling soup i was a pretty crappy barman and i struggled to make decent coffee i know i've got it going on in here about different things but i was never really that great an employee because i knew i belonged elsewhere i couldn't be passionate about that stuff so just because people are kind of giving you this narrative that you're worthless professionally who knows what you could go on to do so just always believe in yourself and again if you don't really want to do the job that you're doing does it really matter you know does it matter 
it matters enough to keep the job. Again, in some cases, I got to a point where I got I got a job that I felt I was on a bit of a roll. I started, I was a marketing assistant, then a marketing officer, then I became a market manager and I was like, right, I'm passionate enough about this. And that's actually the ideal situation that you want to be in. You want to start getting yourself some meaningful work, if, if possible, because it is out there, folks. And just keep searching, just keep applying, keep trying. But what I will say is if you do have qualifications, that's better uh, because it gives you more options gives you more options. If you don't have qualifications, it's a lot of people say that university is a waste of time and all that. But put it this way, you could get into education, especially in Scotland, uh, where you can get basically a student grant and a student loan. Now, a student loan and a student grant works a lot better for me than a huge premium on a payday loan. Now, maybe that would make sense, using a student loan or something like that to fund my professional wrestling, which is the real education that I want to get into. Now, I know some people are not going to fully agree with what I'm saying. People go, well, I like to be good at my job. If you're passionate about your job and you like to be good at your job, do not let me stop you. I'm talking to the people that hate their job and their bosses degrade them every single day of the week. You just, I need you to understand that it's an exchange for money. You are there and you are putting up with it to get the money that you need to be a professional wrestler. That's it. That's it. It is simple as that. It is an exchange. Supply and demand. Thanks very much. There's the money. Go train. Okay? I don't want you to emotionally exhaust yourself at a job that you don't even like. So you've got no energy left to go to training. Just get through it. And then you do the real work when you get to your professional wrestling training. All right? So... Again, you may have the advantage of being able to stay at home. Whatever the case, you might have to get a job. You, I mean, I recommend you do get a job, to be honest with you. You need some income coming in because sometimes if there's a seminar, like for example, you know, this wait till you've been training a bit, but you might see Marty Jones has got a seminar. Dave Taylor's got a seminar. You might need to jump in the car and spend, you know, 50, 60 quid on fuel to even get to the seminar. Then there's 30 quid on top of that. That's 100 notes before you know it, but it's going to be worth it. You know, so, so you do need to build up funds for that. Just please, people, don't do the payday loan things that I did. If you're currently in education, you're getting a loan and stuff like that, it's probably a good time to start dipping the toes in the water here. But as I've discussed, the, the more kind of intense you are with the trading that you do, the more likely that you are going to be successful. So basically, does anyone have any questions with how it relates to their schedule? Does anyone think about like, now, actually, I'm going to tackle that. So Sir Shane says, cutting corners where possible is great in every profession. Uh, being able to have a bit of money on the side to learn something helps. So when I say cutting corners, like what I'm saying is, if you're in a job you don't care about at all, then yeah, don't worry about just getting through it there. But with professional wrestling, what I'm trying to say here is save your energy for pro wrestling and be meticulous there. That's where you have your care and your attention. Now, you're going to get a lot of people telling you that you shouldn't do this and it's not a good idea and all that. I was lucky. I had a, a lot of support. My family know what knew what I was like. If I say I'm going to do something, I go and do it and there's just no point fighting me on it. So thankfully, they were supportive. But you might not be so fortunate in that case. Again, it doesn't really matter what other people think about your goals because at the end of the day, they're your goals and your dreams and you don't have to justify them to anybody. I'm trying to get you all to understand that this is your life. You have one chance at it and you do not want to go to the grave with the regret of thinking, what if I'd have just tried that pro wrestling thing? What if I'd have just given it a go? You don't want to be in that situation. But I understand some people have got families and things like that. So let's look at the time thing, right? Again, you might just have to get up earlier, okay? And if you do have a family, can you do, can you train twice a week? Can you do that? Because if you can train twice a week, then that might be enough to kind of get you to the dance. Because sometimes professional wrestling training, you know, if you can get to the point where it becomes a job, then it kind of starts to pay for itself and it justifies itself. Thankfully, uh, you know, we, you know, I live a pretty simple life. It's me, my partner, and our dog. But if we had kids or whatever, you know, I'm confident that I could up my game of professional wrestling to provide in that sense. And I'm in a very fortunate position. So people, when you approach this task, the best way to do it is don't come out and go, oh, I'm going to start wrestling and just see what happens. You know, you kind of need to have these big goals. So I got into uh, professional wrestling and I said, right, 
I just said to myself, I'm going to give this absolutely everything I've got and see what it takes me. So I kind of did have that mentality. But on the other side, I had the long term goal of I want to be the world champion. So you have to start training like the world champion. You have to start cutting promos like the world champion. You have to start lifting like the world champion. If you want to be this over here, then you have to start acting like this over here. And that is why I'm watching clips of The Rock and hearing at what time he gets up to go and do morning cardio and then lifting weights and then all these meals. That's why I'm listening to Arnold Schwarzenegger. He got his body in that shape. Sure, there are other factors at work, but for me, I can take stuff from that. I can go, right, I'm going to do this. You need to start getting the behaviors of these successful people and you need to understand that it's possible. Again, I'm quoting Gary V here, but do you really need to watch Game of Thrones? Bad example. A lot of people need to watch Game of Thrones. But you know what I'm saying? You don't need to watch Game of Thrones. It is a choice. And if you choose to watch Game of Thrones with your time, power to you. But you then can't turn around and tell me that you didn't have time to go to the gym. That you didn't have time to go to the training session. The cool thing is now with pure gym and all that stuff, when it comes to managing your time, right? If you've got a family, let's say you've got a family and you actually have to put in a lot of time with your spouse or your partner and your kids or your dog or whatever, right? You've got to put in the time. What you can do is get up an hour and a half earlier, two hours earlier and go get your workout in before they even wake up. And you know what? For a while, maybe you just need to sleep six hours instead of eight. Maybe you need to not watch Game of Thrones, okay? I'm just trying to get you guys to understand that these things are all a choice. When you say, I have no money, do you really have no money? Or do you have a whole host of things right in your house that you can sell to get the money to make sure that you can go? When you say you have no money, do you really have no money or are you saving for that holiday? Maybe the money that was going to go on that holiday or that big night out or that music festival. Let me tell you, for me, there, unless I was playing or I was wrestling, there were no holidays. There was no, no music festivals. There, were, there was nothing. There was nothing, people. There was just this. And that sounds pretty scary, but that's the thinking that you need to get into. Hey, if you've got a great job that affords you these luxuries and affords you the time to do what you want, then ignore what I'm saying. But I'm talking to the people who are struggling for time or they're struggling for money or they're struggling for both. I'm not sitting here and saying that it's easy. You must understand that because I know how difficult it was. Remember I told you that time when I was commuting, working, gym, and then sleep, shows at the weekend? I was probably sleeping three, maybe four hours a night, and that was unhealthy. I never want to go back there. But you know what? For a year, it just needed done. It needed done. After that, then I was in a position to go full time. And I'm going to give you an example, again, about the relationship that you have with your employers and things like that. So I uh, was basically, I was in a job where they offered me a job. I accepted the job. And then they said, oh, actually, you know that job that we advertised? We're not offering a job now. What it is, is there's actually two of you that we like, two candidates. So we're going to give you both the job. And we're going to fire one of you after a few months because we can't afford you both. Do you want it? Take it or leave it. And at the time, I didn't have a whole lot of choice, but that was my first ever shot at being a marketing manager. And I was like, this is messed up in so many ways, but I need to take this right now because it was for way more money than I was on and it was part-time. And I was like, you know what? Even if this is for three months, whatever. And this is kind of before, this is before what culture and all that. This happened before that. So when what culture came along, that's when I was able to go full time. When I wrestled Kurt Angle, that's when it was time. So, but before that, I I kind of started the job with these guys. So then they laid off like half of their employees, just basically booted them out the door and said, oh yeah, don't go and say bye to people. Just go straight out the door. You can say bye to them in your own time. And I was like, oh my God. And they said to me, if, uh, you know, after six months, you want to become an employee, we'll make you an employee because that's what I wanted. I didn't want to be, uh, you know, do my wrestling and be contracted to them or, or working as a subcontractor. That didn't work for me. I wanted them to sort all that crap out. So, because that's what they advertised, a job. And then it came to the point where uh, I said, right, so you're going to make me an employee. I've been here for ages. They got rid of the other guy. You know, that kind of blew up in flames. That was both of their fault but he was gone and they were like mm, well you need to go full-time then 
And I was like, well, no, but that's not the deal. I applied for a part-time job at this wage and it was a job. And I still have no guarantees. You can get rid of me tomorrow and I wouldn't even get paid till the end of the month. I have no guarantees here. And again, as I said, you don't have employee rights till two years, but I'd been there for six months and I hadn't accrued any of that. I wasn't even close. So I would have started at zero. So they were like, nah, we're not going to give you the job. And I'm like, oh, cool then. And then I'd actually built up the, so I was in charge, I won't bore you with the details, but I was in charge of basically the sales and marketing for a very small portion of that business. But I built it from earning a couple hundred quid a year to earning several thousand pounds a month. It wasn't moving mountains, but it was paying for my costs and it was putting some money back into the company and I turned it into a very mildly profitable part of the business. And then one of the bosses decided to start messing with it. And I was like, well, you know, I didn't say it as bluntly as this, but in my head, I'm like, well, you tried it and you made no money on it. You lost money on it. I've, you've brought me in to do it. It's making money. And now you want to put it back to the way you want to do it. It's getting pretty annoying. And um, so we started kind of arguing. And then she says, uh, oh, I want to see, I want to see all your emails now. I want to see every email that goes out and every email that comes in. I want to monitor your emails. And then I'm like, well, that doesn't really work for me because Again, I'm not an employee now. I'm kind of a contractor. So, you know, you can't even do that. Uh, so I'm kind of like, the, you know, there's this is this is not really that fun anymore. And I was getting to the point where what culture is kicking off. And I had the match with Kurt Angle. And I was like, you know what? And I'll be honest with you folks, my in-ring work before the Kurt Angle match was not where it needed to be to wrestle somebody like Kurt Angle. The Kurt Angle match was a turning point for me. I think that was probably my first really good match. Um, and I'm thankful for that. That's because I went full-time there. But again, if you, I want you to remember the way they chucked out all those other employees and the way that they treated me. And they had this stuff coming up and I, I needed this time off and they were really pissing me about. And I turned around and you know what I did? I sent them an email. I sent them an email and says, I'm not coming in. I'm done. And I left them in the proverbial S-H-I-T. It was really bad. Um, they had to then go through my emails, look at all the deals that were done, and kind of, it was, was pretty messed up. It was difficult. Now, a lot of people would say, how could you do that? How could you, how could you leave them in that situation? But I had a call to make because they didn't want to make me an employee. They didn't want to, they didn't want to play ball on so many of these issues that I tried to play ball. And then... They were, they were trying to intrude even further into my life and tell, them, and, and tell me what's going to happen when I'm not even an employee. I just had to turn around and say, you know what? I'm sorry, folks, but I'm wrestling. And I literally told them, I was like, I have this big match coming up. I need to prepare for it. I have, I have to dedicate my life to this now. Now, a lot of people would say, oh, maybe you shouldn't have done that. But again, it's an exchange. They didn't really show me much love. So why should I have to show them love back? You know, I'm not kind of preaching that you be dicks to your work. I'm not saying that, but I'm just saying before I would have felt really guilty about that. And in truth, I did actually go in um, after the match and I sorted out it on my own time. I gave them a day free of my time because I thought, you know what? I want to go out the right way. And I organized everything that ended a proper handover and all that stuff. And I did not get paid for that, but I thought it was the right thing to do. But what the reason I'm saying that is because I need you guys to understand that what mattered most was me preparing for the Kurt Angle match. That company clearly did not give a crap about me in any way, shape, or form. They literally told me, we're going to hire two of you and throw one of you out on your arse after a few months. Not only that, they made people just, after working there, some of them worked there for six years, and they said, yeah, off you, yeah, sorry, come to the office. We're going to have to let you go, sorry. You can't go back and say bye to folk. You have to go out that other door, okay? So... Sure, it's polite for me to spend a month handing over to somebody else, but I had the Kurt Angle match and it required me to train pretty much full time for that. And nothing was going to get in the way of that. How do you think I would feel if I was like, yeah, you're right, guys. I won't go and do the extra training with Kurt, for the Kurt Angle match because, you know, you guys are a company that paid my wage. No, people. It is an exchange. It is an equal exchange for services in return for money. And you need to understand that. Your goals, they, you know, let's say you work for Tesco. 
Tesco's ability to supply bread does not rank above your goals, okay? You need to understand that. Your work will have this way of making you think that what they do is all important and what you do is not important at all. You need to get out of that thinking. It's just not going to help you. You need to value your goals above anything else, basically. However, whilst maintaining your ethics, you, you do have to do things the right way because there are a lot of scumbags in wrestling and I really want to encourage you guys and, and you know, I don't mean guys. I just when I say guys, I mean guys, girls, whatever. Um, you know, so I don't mean just men. I just say the word guys, you know. Um, but what I'm, trying to, what I'm trying to do is I want you to pursue wrestling, but don't let it change you. Don't let it change into a bad person because the business can have that effect on you. There's so many negative attitudes and behaviors in the business that it's easy to get caught up in but you have to just always remember to be yourself be the person you were don't let it change you don't let success change you keep your feet on the ground so let's recap what we've talked about today we talked about the time aspect of things time the most valuable commodity you know you gotta make time for those goals i'm challenging you get up tomorrow go for a walk get that fasted cardio in go to the gym even, again, if you've got a family, get in three gym sessions a week. That's three hours a week. Three hours a week. You can do that. Can you get up an hour you, earlier than you usually do? An hour and a half earlier than you usually do? Go to the gym and then go to work? Of course you can. On the other days, get up 25 minutes earlier and go for a walk and then turn that walk into a run after a few weeks of walking? Of course you can. There's your workouts right there. It is as simple as that, folks. It is as simple as that. You got the gym stuff sorted out. That's going to do for now. If you don't have a family and all these responsibilities, you got no excuse. If you're like me, your ass should be in the gym basically five, six days a week, which for me, I can say gladly is now the case. It was not the case for a while. I let myself slack a little bit. I coast a little bit. I'm not proud of myself, but hey, that's what happened. All right. Now I'm making it right. I'm in the gym six days a week because I need that rest day. I'm working hard on my diet. You got to do that. Um, again, in the evenings, you got to make some time for the professional wrestling training. And we've agreed Maybe, you know, we're not going to play that new video game for five hours. What I want you to do, folks, if you've got Steam or you've got on your PC or you've got your PlayStation or some way to look at the amount of time that you've put into video games, I want you to go and look at that counter and think, man, if I'd have put a quarter of this time into professional wrestling, I could probably be a professional wrestler right now. And that is the scary thing. And you know what? I could look at the time I've spent on my Steam account and think, man, if I'd have done that, maybe I'd be the champion. Maybe I'd be the world champion. Who knows? That scares me. That keeps me up at night. So now I'm trying to do as much as I can. That being said, you still do need time for rest and recovery. But you need to get it in balance. It's all about balance. At the same time, though, it's about obsession. It's this really tough. It's it's so tough, folks. I don't want to. I don't want to put this across to you as if it's easy because it's not. It's so difficult. It's the most difficult thing I've ever had to do, emotionally, physically. It's the most difficult, but it is the most rewarding. So rewarding. When I talk about balance, can you maybe? I'm just looking at the comments. Can you maybe just not play foot ma football manager a few nights a week? Not play Red Dead Redemption. Because if you've got a family, then that's that's a legit excuse. But if you've got a family and then you're playing Red Dead Redemption and Madden or you know FIFA or whatever on top of that, then it starts to get well. Maybe you do have the time. And you know what? Let's just let's just treat your your professional wrestling as the hobby for a while. At the end of the day, you do have to get it in balance, but. You gotta have that just unrelenting passion and desire to continue as well. So, like I say, you're giving up some of that stuff. You're putting in the time to do your professional wrestling training. You're using the rotisserie chicken. If you're vegan, I can't advise you. I'm sorry, I'm not a vegan, but I'm sure there are plenty of alternatives or for vegetarians. But if you eat meat, you got your rotisserie chicken. You can cut that up into portions throughout the day. You've got your big packs of eggs. Okay, make it free range. Let's be, uh, you know, at least free range. Uh, I don't want to encourage anyone to get a caged, caged eggs. That's just, eh, I can't. It needs to be minimum free range. 
uh, but get yourself a big stack of eggs and cook yourself six egg omelets. It doesn't take long at all. Put them in a tub. There you go. So, so cook yourself two six egg omelets. Boom. Pap that in a tub. Or, you know, if you're a lot lighter than me, four egg omelets. Pap them in a tub. You got your rotisserie chicken. And you got, basically you got your meals for the day right there. With a little, add in some carbs, you're done, folks. You're done. So you've, you've maybe cut back. You don't mean to stop, but you've cut back on that free time stuff that was eating up so much of your time. You've got, you're, you're figuring out how to reduce the time on the diet. You've already got your workouts in in the morning. You've got your, your, your fasted cardio in. And you know what? When you're traveling to work, if you travel on, uh, on, on the bus or the train, maybe that's the time to watch matches. Maybe that's the time to start thinking about your character. Maybe that's time to start rehearsing promos in your mind. Get thinking. Get obsessed about professional wrestling. If you're in a job you hate, again, do enough to be decent at the job and to keep the job. But always on your mind should be the end goal with professional wrestling and improving your professional wrestling and getting obsessive about it. That's all the time aspects taken care of. In terms of the money, we've agreed. Probably need, we need to get some income here because as much as creativity and passion can add to the equation, we need money coming in the door to fund what we're doing here. At the end of the day, you need to go to all the training. You need to go to all the seminars. You need to pay for that diet. Even though you've reduced the cost, as we talked about, by using the rotisserie chicken and by opting for eggs rather than like kind of, you know, prepackaged meals and Marks and Spencer's boxes of chicken and stuff like that, it's going to rinse you. Uh, but there are ways to get that stuff cheap. And again, there's people who know know how to do it. You know what I do when I need to know how to do something? I, I YouTube it. I'll go on YouTube and say how to eat clean cheap. You know, I've, I haven't done that. Eating clean, on the cheap, whatever. Just put it in. Just just type it in and have a look and see what it says. So, um, again, Seek out those other experts. I don't know everything, but when I need to know something, I just look that up. So basically, you've saved some some time there. Um, you've given up a little bit of Red Dead. You're not playing FIFA so much. You're doing that. If you don't have a family, there's no excuse. Um, you're saving your time there. You're getting your workouts in the morning. You're getting your three minimum weight sessions. You're getting your fasted cardio. Things are starting to look pretty good. This has This podcast has all been about how to create a revenue stream to pay for your training but also how to create a little gap in your schedule to put in the time that you need to it really depends how you want to achieve your goals if you want to just be on local shows then you know you can train for for local shows but if you want to be the world champion you need to train like the world champion and folks professional wrestling is like this if you shoot for the stars you will land on the moon so in order to even get on your local shows you should be thinking like a world champion i know i'm not going to win any bodybuilding titles anytime soon but i'm trying my best to train and eat like arnold schwarzenegger would because i know if i do that I'm going to shoot for that and have a physique that is great for professional wrestling. You know what I'm saying? So at the end of the day, it's time to put in the work, people. Because you can watch this podcast. You can watch this. You can listen to this podcast. You can hear me say these things. And this is all great. And we can get positive. But what comes next needs to be action. I need to be getting up early. Go for a stroll. That's my one challenge to you, folks. Get up early tomorrow and go for a walk. How hard is that? But we need to start building behaviors. So you go for a walk, then eventually you build that up to going to the gym a few times. If you want to know more about going to the gym, we covered that in detail in the last podcast. And this one's really just been specifically about how to balance your life with professional wrestling training in terms of time and money. So I hope that has answered uh, a lot of your questions. Um, So let me just uh, have a look here. Um... So actually, Sir Shane makes a good point. He says, well, I'm not really looking to be a wrestler, but any, but really anything. I could be a bit better. Uh, I could be a better anything if I didn't spend 2,000 hours playing football manager. It's a very good point. It is a very good point. Again, you still need time to play play football manager. Even even play two to four hours a week, right? That sounds like a lot, or, or it might not sound like a lot to some of you, but you know what happens when you start to manage your time in this way? When you start to really put in graft with your schedule, you start to really appreciate it. I can guarantee those 2,000 hours that you put into Football Manager, some of them are like, I'm bored. I guess I'll play Football Manager. 
Whereas when you're working your ass off in your job and then you're, well, with the whole schedule, you're working your ass off balancing your job and professional wrestling training and all that, then when you finally do get to play football manager for the few hours that you've allocated yourself, oh, you will absolutely love it because it's about that balance. If you're playing your video games too much, then you don't even appreciate it as much. Okay, uh, just looking at some of the comments as well. Um, again, James is saying he's going to sell some old stuff so you can get some extra funds for training. Again, I'll give you an example. Recently, I sold my 3DS um, to one of, our, one of our valued fans here because, you know, I was like, you know what? I need to free up some funds. And I decided to sell my 3DS. Did I, did I really need my 3DS? It's not absolutely essential to my existence. So you know what? Maybe I can part with that. And then you find out, actually, the things that I really, really need are few and far between. And really, when it comes to making sacrifice, because folks, that is what it's about. Every action has an equal and opposite reaction. It is about sacrifice and dedication. It's about choices. By not playing football manager, I'm giving time to pro wrestling, which in turn builds my career and increases my chances of making money in professional wrestling. By me giving up the 3DS, I have more funds to invest in podcasting equipment, which increases my chances of becoming an opinion leader in professional wrestling, building a fan base so I can provide for my family through professional wrestling. What you, the th wonderful thing about wrestling is what you put in, you get out. And it's in equal measure. Every ounce that you put in, you will get back tenfold and it will be worth it. It has been difficult, but it's been so worth it for me. And that's the thing that gets you through it. When it's tough, when you're making sacrifices with your time and going, oh, well, I really want to play football manager. I really want to do this, but I'm going to put it into my professional wrestling. What happens is that becomes a behavior and a habit and you get used to doing what's right rather than what meets your immediate gratification. At the end of the day, we can talk about it being time and money, but it actually all comes under choices and sacrifice and discipline. And having that discipline to do the right thing, and sometimes the right thing is to give it everything that you've got. And sometimes that means parting with some stuff that you don't really need and not playing some video games that you don't really need to play. Don't get me wrong, if you're a workaholic, you need to watch a movie here and there. You need to play a video game here and there, but let's get that in balance. If there's one thing we can balance, it's that. Get obsessive about wrestling. Get obsessive about monetizing what you're doing. Get obsessive about spending time with your family, quality time. But I'll see all that other nonsense, video games, all that, eh, that can go if something needs to go. At the end of the day, it's about how badly do you really want to be a professional wrestler? I've given you some options here from, from, and just again, it's from my experiences, but hopefully I've given you some perspective of what it's like to make these sacrifices. I need you to understand, I did not just wake up and decide to be a professional wrestler. This has been my life. It has taken everything from me, but it has been so worth it to this point, and it will be so worth it in the journey moving forward. Folks, I hope you've enjoyed this podcast. Thank you so much for having me. Um, again, this has been episode three of How to Become a Professional Wrestler. Um, you can download this podcast from Spotify, iTunes, Podbay, Stitcher, you know the drill, Google Podcasts, everywhere you get podcasts. It'll be on YouTube soon as well. Um, it'll be on Facebook. It'll be it'll be everywhere, folks. Twitch, you name it, it's all there. And if you have enjoyed it, check out the Joe Henry Show, which is my main uh, podcast series as well. But if you're still with me, I've got one favor to ask you, folk, folks, and this is a huge deal for me. I'm not even going to ask you to buy a T-shirt from HendryShop.com right now. That's that's optional. But what I'm going to ask you, folks, it costs you nothing. If someone could type it in the chat for me right now, it's YouTube.com forward slash Joe Hendry. Go there and subscribe to my YouTube channel. That is all I ask for you in return for this, this amazing wisdom from someone who is trying their very best to get through the professional wrestling business. You know, we haven't made it yet, but we're getting there. Um, I would really appreciate if you subscribe to my YouTube channel because I'm trying to build that up. You'll notice I'm uploading almost every single day now. I'm working my butt off to make that the best YouTube channel I possibly can. 
So if you could subscribe, it would be awesome. Thank you so much if you can do that. Again, it's youtube.com forward slash Joe Hendry. If you care about me as a person or a professional wrestler, uh, spare a few minutes to go and do so. Um, so thank you so much for that. Um, okay, folks, I've been the prestigious one. Have a great evening. Um, I will try to get more questions done next time. Sorry, I got in a bit of a rant there, but thank you so much. I will see you next time.